Hey there everyone. So for this tutorial, I want to go over the camera shaking effect that you can achieve in After Effects. And this is what it's going to kind of end up looking like. You're going to get the little shaking effect. And what I want to do is I want to show you how to get the shaking effect and get control over that effect. There's two different ways to, to go about this. Now, first thing you want to do is to compile all the footage that you want to actually shake. Now for this, I'm actually just shaking the whole composition, everything in the composition. Um, for you, maybe if you have like a video shoot, like you're, you're outside filming, but you actually really had steady hands and you want to give it a shaky effect, or if you were using a tripod and you want to give it a little shake and you're trying to just give it some, some different type of effect like that, this is how you can achieve it. In the composition, first create a null layer. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rename this as control. This is going to be my control layer. And the first thing you want to do is select all of the footage that you want to be controlled by the shaking effect. So we're going to use the parent whip, select it to control, or you could use the drop down. And I'm going to go ahead and lock all of these layers. At this point, I'm no longer using them. The first way you can actually get a camera shake in is simply by going to position by selecting P and hold Alt and select the stopwatch icon. And in the text area, type in wiggle, parentheses. Uh, the first number is going to be your frequency. So let's say three, comma. The next one is going to be your amplitude. So we'll say 20. And we're gonna close that parentheses, select away. Now, if you take the time slider and scrub it through, you can see that the text and the background is slightly moving around. Let's go ahead and throw up a RAM preview really quick. As you see, the camera is actually shaking around. And I've only got a small portion of it rendering out, but um, now you see the effect. So to get a little control over the wiggle effect, what you're gonna do is go ahead and delete that. And it'll take away that expression. Go to your control layer and add two time sliders to it. So go under expression controls, slider control. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. And I'm gonna rename these, one to frequency slider and one amplitude slider. And next what we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to do a little bit of coding. So I have this set up right here and this is the original code that we used. We used wiggle and we had two number values in there. And remember I said the first number value was the frequency and the second number value was the amplitude. So for this, I actually went ahead and shortened it up and, and used freak and amp. And I did that simply so it correlates with the other code that I put in. Now, if I were to actually put freak one, I would actually have to come up here and change this to freak one as well. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now for this, these two lines of code, Essentially what they're doing is the first portion is pointing to the composition layer and control is pointing to the control null layer. Again, if I actually said control four, this null layer would need to be named control four because that's the one I'm pointing at. That's the one I'm trying to control or manipulate. The next portion of it is pointing to the effect, which is the frequency slider, which that's what I named it over here. And then slider, which it, it's a subset, so it's going to connect to that one specifically. And so I did the same thing with the amplitude. And in Wiggle, where it's supposed to be number values, you connect it to the code name, freak and amp. So let's take this, copy it. So go here, hold Alt, and select your stopwatch icon next to position. Now, since we're working with several lines of information, Sometimes it's good to go ahead and drag this down to see what you're typing in. So let's paste that in there. That's exactly what we typed up, up above and deselect from it. Now, let's go ahead and run through real quick. So we're scrubbing through. There's no shaking effect, okay? Now we go up to the slider and we're gonna change the frequency. And we're gonna bring that up. And as I move the amp amplitude slider, you're gonna see it take effect. So let's have it at an extreme value, just so you can see it. 
Now when I scroll through, you see that it's shaking dramatically. And the good thing about this is, say if you actually were holding a camera, you're not going to be shaking really bad the whole time. So uh, having it connected to the sliders is kind of nice because say, say you're, you're running. Well, the camera's going to be shaking a lot while you're running um, if you're trying to get that effect. And this works a lot for a 3D animation too, seeing as when you're doing a, a camera in the animation, a lot of times it's very smooth while it's going through the scene. So you might want to have that shaking effect to give it like a realistic, like someone's holding a camera or someone's running or you're getting a, a, a point of view effect. So the good thing about having the sliders is what gives you that humanistic aspect is you can, you can animate the keyframes. So let's go down here. Let's bring this down to zero. Let me go back up to here and just crank this back up again. And you'll see as I scroll through the timeline, the camera is shaking, shaking, and then it comes to a halt, and then it begins to shake again. So theoretically, you could be someone's running, someone's running, and then they stop, and then they begin running again. Something like that. Okay. Um, that's essentially what I wanted to show you. That's the camera shaking effect. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thanks, guys, for watching this video.